What's up, y'all? Got a banger from Heavy. Let's get straight into it. Sometimes, celebrities just have to put rude interviewers in their place. Like when Matthew McConaughey had a tense face-off with Joy Behar, after she interrupted him just to insult his close personal friend, tennis champion Novak Djokovic. I was happy to be in his box, got to sit behind his parents, which was really awesome, to see them when he brings them Isn't up and where they started. Why is her name even Joy when she sucks all the joy out of the room? Shots fired! Shots fired! See, modern women do this all the time. They try to test your G. The best thing you can do is be stoic in these instances and just look at her, give her three seconds of silence, and just keep the conversation pushing. An anti-vaxxer? So, yeah. <laughs> Why even ask Things that only got it contributed nothing to the conversation. Worse, when McConaughey's political aspirations came up, with Behar nearly derailing the actor's campaign before it even began. Do you think you could get time, elected in Texas being anti-gun? God. Do I think I could get elected in Texas being anti-gun? One thing... Repeats the question to make her realize how stupid it sounds, but let's see how he re responds here. About if, if, if me in politics is to give you a direct statement right there is yeah. me playing a game that I'm not interested in playing. Okay. To don't, give you don't a direct do it. statement don't right do there. You should really do be sucking the joy out of everything, bro. From that moment, McConaughey's aggravation became unmistakable, much like Tom Cruise's reaction oh, when an interviewer posed intrusive questions about his then recent divorce from actress Nicole Kidman. Was Nicole the love of your life? Stupid. What do you, what do you mean, Peter? <laughs> you were married for 10 years? I, listen, we raised children. I. After failing to read the room, the interviewer continued with yet I'm another. Sorry, but I, there's something about Tom Cruise and that middle tooth. It always gets me, man. Another prying question, prompting Cruise to decisively shut him down. And do you have a relationship where you you talk? It's a parenting relationship you know, and talk professionally about each other's. Why don't we? Why don't, listen? Here's the here's the thing, Peter. Yeah. You're stepping over a line now. You're stepping over a line. You know you are. Get him. Well, I suppose the questions Peter, though, that people want to know. Peter, you want to know. Take and responsibility for what you want to know. Don't say <laughs> what other people. This is a conversation that I'm having with you right now. You're right. Okay. So I'm just telling you right now. Okay. Get him, Tom. Just put your manners back in. Nevertheless, <laughs> few celebrities have endured greater public humiliation than actress Lindsay Lohan, Oof. who was openly mocked about her personal and legal troubles during this widely criticized interview with David Letterman. Aren't you supposed to be in rehab now? And how long will you be Why in would he ask that? That's so rude. Rehab. Uh, three months. How many times have you been in rehab? Several. And what, what, how will this time be different? What are they rehabbing, first of all? What, what is on their list? What, what are they going to work on when you walk through the door? We didn't discuss in the, this in the pre-interview. No. The actress appeared on the show to promote her upcoming movie, but found herself desperately trying to steer the interview back on track as Letterman persistently made cruel jokes at her expense. You have to be in rehab May 2nd. Are you going to be there? You'll be there, right? Who's taking you to rehab? You don't want to talk about that either, right? <laughs> oh, God. When you go to the rehab, what do they well, do? Well, let's, let's, this is, we have to, we're here for a movie. We have to what? Let's stay on the positive. Oh, what? Like, trying... aside from that side of the positive. Yeah. All right. Come now, on now. Things got so bad that Lohan was God, actually. David Letterman really in his feminine on that. Bro, just read the room. Actually on the verge of tears, with her voice noticeably shaking as she struggled to maintain her composure. No, but I don't want people to think that I'm making a joke of that. No, you shouldn't make a joke. I'm not. Because this could be good for you. It will be good for you. Yeah, it will. Yeah. Have you been to this no, place? No, it's not like a joking matter. No. But the bullying doesn't stop there. Oh, As brother, I've seen Jonah Hill get ate up, poor guy. Actor Jonah Hill has faced numerous jokes about his weight in various interviews over now. the years. You know, shout out to Jonah Hill. This is a tough journey for a lot of men. Shout out to him for doing this. Jonah, do you think it's important to be unattractive to be funny? <laughs> Can skinny people be funny? What the f man? You know, I, 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 I don't understand. Can you just ask a normal question? Are you the fat guy in Hollywood still? Or, or is everybody like look at you and they're like, oh wow, you know this- but Dude, here's what's so funny to me. Is if they were like, are you still the fat chick in Hollywood? Is it, do you have to be a fat girl to be funny? Like what happens? Why can we just shame men for being fat, but with a girl she's big boned or just thick, thick? You know what I mean? What is this? Why is it so normalized where we can shame men for being fat, but you can't shame a chick? A chick's just curvy or thick. 
This is why I got to stand up for men. This is absolutely ridiculous. Jonah Hill has carved his way through Hollywood. He's done his thing. He, he was a big dude. He lost a lot of weight. Like, good for him. We should applaud him for that. But yet, these interviewers are just being so cruel. It's unreal to me. It's great now you're healthy. Uh, do you have any other questions that are smart? First of all, you smell good, which is surprising. <laughs> Why is that feel? surprising? I don't know. I just wouldn't think of a you, a guy who just would have instant a, insults. A nice scent on, and it that's such a good. like. I'm gonna really work hard to not take that as a shot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Similarly, Mad Men's Christina Hendricks hates it when interviewers make comments about her body. With the actress once even shutting down an interview over such a remark. You have been an inspiration as a full-figured woman. What is the most inspiring? Full-figured. What? What is? Let me know in the comments. Have you ever heard that full figured? What does that mean? Story that you can remember where you've inspired someone. <laughs> um, what is, uh, does I that mean? Big boobs? <laughs> does that mean a fat rack? What is? What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've I've gotten. I'm sorry. Despite the awkward moment, the host would make yet I mean, her boobs are damn near touching her clavicles, but like, oh shit, oh shit, oh I don't know. Another attempt to discuss the actress's figure. These things are sitting up. However, this time, Hendrix firmly puts her in her place. You've been known as a an inspiration for women as being a full figure. What is the most? I mean, it just said, you just said it again. It's just, it's just sort of. But when it's it comes such to a shot shutting down inappropriate questions, perhaps no one does it better than Tom Hardy, Tom whose Hardy's 2015 goated. exchange with an intrusive reporter spread like wildfire online. Um, your own sexuality seems a bit more ambiguous. Do you find it hard for celebrities to talk to their sex to talk to media about their sexuality? What? What on earth are you on about? <laughs> Despite his visible <laughs> agitation, Hardy kept his cool, with many commending the actor for the way he assertively set boundaries around his personal life. But what is your question? I was wondering if you find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. I don't find it difficult for celebrities to talk about their sexuality. Um, are you asking me about my sexuality? Um, sure. <laughs> Why? Why? Um, Thank you. Okay. But if you thought that <laughs> clip... Just, thank you. It's good to have you out. Next question. Was cringe-inducing? Just wait until you see how Hardy handled another disrespectful interviewer in this next painfully awkward segment. I have a question for Tom Hardy. Tom, I'll preface my remarks by saying that I have five sisters, a wife, a daughter, and a mother, so I know what it's like to be uh, out, outgunned by estrogen. But I just wanted to ask you, as you were reading the script, did you ever think, why are all these women in here? I thought this was supposed to be a man's movie. <sighs> See, I don't like these lines of questioning either. You know what I mean? It, it's that that statement right there is is giving a little bit of misogyny. It's it's supposed to be a man's movie. You know, James Bond is a man's movie. This has a woman on the cover. Whatever this is, this is probably a movie about women. I don't even know the the movie in question, but like prefacing with, I have five sisters and like, come on, dude. No. <laughs> not for one minute. Why not? Why not? Yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of obvious. Hardy's co-star in The Dark Knight Rises, Anne Hathaway, would also have to silence a rude reporter who appeared to have an unusual fixation on her physical fitness. You are in phenomenal shape. Thank you. You're, you're very... You, well, you, you're always in great shape, but you had to make sure you were in perfect shape for this one, didn't you? It wasn't about being in perfect shape, it was about being able to do the stunts and the fighting perfectly. As the This woman is aging like wine. She's great for her age. I'm pretty sure she's much older than me. Interviewer persisted in questioning Hathaway about her physique. She grew increasingly frustrated. Is, is there a certain regimen you put yourself... You know what this dude looks like? He looks like, um... You know the Mario character that's like the ooh. You know what I mean? That's what he looks like to me. Shots fired! Shots fired! <laughs> a really, really big face. Through, in terms of ooh. the diet, the workout, wh what is the feline fitness regime? <laughs> <laughs> um, a lot. Uh -huh. It's 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 all the boring stuff that no one ever wants to do. It's just watch what you eat and get yourself to the gym. 
Any particular workout? I All right, gents, let's keep it a buck. You're capable of more. It's time to level up, forge your own path, and build the life you want. Starting your own business isn't easy, but it's the most rewarding adventure you'll ever take. And guess what? Muon Marketing is here to help with 50% off website design and lead generation services. Don't wait for permission. Your future is in your hands. Scan the QR code or click the link in the description to get started. It's time to start your own business and unleash your potential. Wait, well, <laughs> what's what's the deal, man? You look great. No, no, no. I, no, no, seriously. That, we well, have to talk you. about this. What what do you want? Are you trying to fit into a cat suit? Yeah, See, this, is what, this is what a lot of people do. Like, women do this all the time to men. They try to test you. I'm going back to testing your G, but they'll they'll keep prying on the same question because they want a certain answer. You just have to know when to cut cut and cut and run and uh, just move the conversation on. Be the notoriously hot-tempered chef Gordon Ramsay, who would unleash his wrath I'm on Gordon a Gordon Ramsay of reaction channels gotcha journalist attempting to ambush him with photos of an allegedly unsatisfactory steak served at one of Ramsey's restaurants. Um, it's really weird for you to give me a piece of paper and when you say am I satisfied that it's a good steak you have to be a little bit more honest with me on that one what are you trying to get at? Ramsey confronted the reporter but for the, the under last guy I would confront. Let me know in the comments. W would you ever come up to Gordon Ramsay? He he has so many clapbacks, bro. <laughs> I would never. And a tactic and expertly explained why ordering a steak well done is just plain wrong. But you asked the you asked the steak to be cooked well done. And is that a well done steak? Oh, come on. What is this? I mean, where where can can you I mean, I keep mean, on rolling for, for legal reasons. This is absolutely crucial. But how sad is this, that you ask for a steak to be cooked well done, okay? Now, whatever quality of beef it is, it's gone past any form of taste when you've cooked it well done. So you present me with a picture, God bless you. It looks like a freaking hockey puck. Shots fired, shots fired. <laughs> it looks like a lump of charcoal. And you say, is that right? I don't eat steak well done. That's your prerogative because you're the customer. Unfortunately, you're never going to identify the quality of a beef when the steak is well cooked. So, I'm really sorry to piss on your bonfire, but it's a bit of a stupid <laughs> question. Thank you. <laughs> Can I give you the paper back? <laughs> oh my god. I thought it was an intelligent interview. Things got highly personal in this next interview when actor Michael B. Jordan recognized a reporter who just so happened to be a former oh, classmate who had bullied him before he rose to fame. And you know, we know each other. We go way back all the way to Chad Science in Newark, okay? What a corny kid, right? <laughs> no. I did not say that, misquoted for sure. No, you did not hear me say cry. I said we used to make fun of the name, but yeah, he is obviously killing things out here. The situation somehow- This is why it's so great to kill people with success. I heard a quote the other day that really resonated. Talk is often the substitute for action. Stop telling people what you're gonna do and just start doing it. Results respond to effort. Put in the work, get the results, and then put the results in people's faces. Stop telling them what you're gonna do. So many of my friends will sit there and talk about the things they're doing. Stop talking about it. I know, but I didn't tell anybody I was gonna start a YouTube channel. I just started a YouTube channel. Get out there and just get it done. How got even more awkward when Jordan's Creed 3 co-star, Jonathan Major, showed up, with the interviewer quickly making him uncomfortable. Isn't this the sexiest man uh, show off right here? Who's the sexiest man? Because now let's, what kind who's of question the sexiest? Is that? Speaking of bullies, recent oh, years- Ellen Degenerate. <laughs> Let's see. Didn't she get completely canceled from her show or something? Have seen numerous reports about Ellen DeGeneres' alleged toxic behavior backstage, which makes this clip of actress Dakota Johnson putting her in her place all the more satisfying. You turned 30. I did. And um, how was the party? I wasn't invited. <laughs> Actually, no, that's not the truth, Ellen. You were invited. Last year, no, last time I was on the show, last year, you gave me a bunch of about not inviting you, but I didn't even know you wanted to be in- Ellen DeGeneres has a haircut of a seventh grade boy. Shots fired! Shots what fired! What is this? You got billions and millions of dollars. Why do you- Who's your barber? I want to talk to your barber. Because your hair looks like- Invited. Well, who I didn't want to be I... invited to a party. Well, I didn't even know you liked me. <laughs> <laughs> of course I like you. You knew I liked you. You've been on the show many times, and, and don't I show- like? <laughs> yeah, but I did invite you and you didn't come. So Ooh. this time you invited me? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. How do you know? I don't think so. I'm glad she got Ask canceled, everybody. bro. <laughs> yeah. 
Johnson humiliated DeGeneres like no one has before, sparking media speculation about the true nature of their relationship due to the tense exchange. Um, and then, but Tig Notaro performed at your party? She did. She did a set? She did, it was a surprise. What did she do? A bunch of funny stuff. She's hilarious. <laughs> She's my favorite comedian. Yeah. Other than you. Ellen, let's keep it about you're not a comedian, honey. Oh shit. oh shit! You're just you're just like a regular schmegular talk show host now at this point. Come on now attempting to interview him at New York Fashion Week 2017, with the actor launching into a rant that has since become infamous. I love Jim Carrey. There's no meaning to any of this, so I, uh, I wanted to find the most meaningless thing that I could f come to and join, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and here I am. They're I mean, you gotta admit, it's completely meaningless. Although the reporter <laughs> tried to provide context for the event to carry, he would scoff at her explanation, expressing his disbelief in fashion icons or in anything else for that matter. Well, they say they're celebrating icons inside. Celebrating icons. icons. Boy, that is just the absolute lowest aiming, you know, possibility that we could come up with. <laughs> it's like icons. What do you, do you believe in icons? I don't I believe in personalities. I don't believe that you exist. I don't believe in icons. Uh, I don't believe in personalities. I believe that peace lies beyond personality, beyond invention and disguise, beyond the so red look. S that you wear on your chest that makes bullets bounce off. I believe that it's deeper than that. I believe we're a field of energy dancing for itself. And, uh,. I don't care. Carey later explained <laughs> that his erratic behavior stemmed from an existential crisis he experienced that year, during which he grappled with his sense of identity. Who did? There is no me. There's no you. No. We're not here. This is a dream. There's just things happening. And I will say, Jim Carrey, I, there was some, there's some validity to some of that stuff that he was saying. Um, definitely some validity to it, but all of it, eh, I don't know, but some of it for show. He was off his rocker on some of those interviews. In this next painful clip, you'll see a reporter attempting to flirt with actress Megan Fox, only for her to uncomfortably shut it down. I don't know if there's every, I, I don't know if there's a man alive who's bro, not in What is this haircut, bruh? Love with you in some way. You're so silly. You know what I'm, I'm am I really? You're a silly no, man. No, I'm not silly You're a silly at all. man in a checkered shirt. I am not. Wow. <laughs> this interview has not aged well, as Fox has since openly addressed her experiences with objectification in Hollywood. You know, I think you're flirting with me. I'm kidding. Oh, oh dude. And speaking of interviews that aged poorly, back in 2009, host Matt Lauer faced significant backlash for inappropriate comments he made towards fired. Sandra Bullock regarding a scene in her film, The Proposal, in which she appeared nude. The Great major movie. thing that's changed since you were here last? Yes. I have now seen you naked. <laughs> <laughs> I and I'm seen, so sorry about that. I have seen you naked. Were you able to sleep afterwards? Uh, you know. Why are you looking down? This was later followed by allegations of sexual misconduct conduct what? against Matt Lauer in 2017, leading to his unceremonious dismissal from NBC News. I watched it last night. It is a lot of fun. Did Thank I mention you. you have a nude scene in this it's movie? Pretty much from the time you opened from your mouth. Time? Yeah. Sandra yeah. Bullock. Come back more often. No. Giving us men a bad name. Loki, does somebody want to carry it? Go to your place. Go. Sit. Free. Wait. Free. Free. Go to your place. The reason I want to react to this video today is because I wanted to talk about people testing you. You're going to have men test you, you're going to have women testing you, but it's always going to be a point where you have to realize how to react. It's a stoic philosophy. You only have control over how you react. You don't have control over all the external things that happen in your life. You don't have any control over any of that. What's going to happen? But the one thing you do have control over is how you react. So when somebody comes to you with some of this bull, bull corn, bull crap, trying to test your G, be stoic. Be absolutely stoic. Sit there, give them a three to five second stare, and say, why would you ask a question like that? Or, here's a really good one. They ask you a question, and you, you say something like, I figured you would ask that question. Or you seem like the type to ask a question like that. What does that do? You're gaslighting. And then they're like, I'm, I'm insecure. Why, what does he mean by me asking a question like that? You gotta know these mental gymnastics. I should come up with an ebook with talking about the mental gymnastics that we have to go through as men in this world. It's just absolutely brutal. And going back to the Jonah Hill thing, calling him fat. You couldn't call a chick fat. You couldn't sit there and be like, so do you have to be a fat chick to be funny? Shots fired! Shots fired! It doesn't work that way. 
Sadly, it doesn't work that way. But man, um, I, th I threw in this video just a little bit of a mix, a little bit of something different, just because I thought we could get some life lessons out of this. But always control how you react. The Stoic Philosophies. 48 Laws of Power is a good book to look at. Um, but honestly, if you just start studying some Stoicism from Marcus Aurelius, like, bro, it'll absolutely change your life. You only control how you react. You can't control all the external forces. Forces just do what you can do. Things are going to happen. React accordingly. Um, and you're in control of your own feelings. Don't let other, don't let someone else control your emotions and control your feelings. Let me know in the chat. Do you feel like if somebody hurts your feelings, it's your fault? For me, I think it is because I'm taking it personal. So you can't hurt my feelings. You can't get to me. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality Makes You Irresistible to Women and Respected by Men. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Loki, did you have a good time? He couldn't care. Couldn't care less. He couldn't care it less. Kakarot! <laughs> <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.